What is going on, guys? Jeff here, Mad Headers Reef. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 moderate to low light corals that you can add to your reef tank. These are going to be corals that are ideal to add to those not so hot spots in your reef tank and just add a splash of color that don't require a whole lot of light. But before we jump into anything, if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love yourself some reef tank, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be in the know every time that we upload a brand new video. Let's actually define what low to moderate lighting is. So one way to measure lighting in a reef tank is the measurement of PAR. And if you're unfamiliar with what PAR stands for, it is the measurement of photosynthetic active radiation which it would make sense to pay attention to that because corals themselves are actually photosynthetic now as far as low light requirement as far as from a par standpoint we're looking at 30 to 50 par where moderate would be 50 to 150 par so that's a lot bigger of a range in comparison to low but a lot of corals fall into these categories and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So let's take a look at the top 10 corals that should be considered for a low to moderate lighting situation in a reef tank. And kicking things off with number 10, we have the Pavona coral. These guys are also known as the cactus coral, and they have a few different growth patterns. Some of it is like vertical plating, and it also does a fair amount of encrusting. It usually comes in colors such as blue, green and orange but this one right here is probably one of the more striking variants where you have actually two different colorations going on you have the purple and the green i would consider this a very beginner friendly coral and one that is going to do a fair amount as far as filling in the blanks in a reef tank a lot of times you have your show pieces you know spread out evenly throughout the tank I would take the Pavona and fill in the in-betweens, and this one right here is probably one of the best ones that you could add as far as Pavona goes. Coming in at number nine on our top 10 corals for those low to moderate lighting situations, we have the Blasto. Now, the Blasto is definitely one of those corals that are going to teeter towards the lower lighting of the spectrum. They definitely appreciate those low light situations and they'll actually open up a little bit more than what you'll typically see in moderate lighting or even high lighting. If I was going to put a number to it as far as par is concerned, 70 par or less, this coral is going to absolutely thrive. But you can have them in situations where they're getting hit with a little bit more light. It's just something that you're going to want to build up over time. You don't want to hammer them with light the first time that you put them in the reef tank they are going to need to acclimate to higher pars but they definitely can be kept in moderate lighting this little lps coral is a great addition for beginners and can work in a variety of different size aquariums different lighting schemes and it's really just a good all-around coral if you have the opportunity to take a look at a blasto and get one in your reef tank i would strongly recommend it Coming in at number eight, one of my personal favorites, the chalice coral. Now, these guys absolutely love low lighting situations. And as far as the par number value to low lighting, I would have them in a situation where they're hitting 80 par or less. The one trip up with the chalice is there's a few different species within the group of chalice corals. And some of them do have a little bit better taste uh, for different lighting situations. So you want to make sure that you are adjusting to the species of chalice that you have. Uh, and another consideration to make with chalice corals is they have sweeper tentacles. Uh, they're going to do best in the sand bed. Uh, but you want to make sure that you give them plenty of room so they don't slap their neighbors and give them a nasty sting. Speaking of slap your neighbor, you're going to have to do that to get yourself a scoli coming in at number seven. Uh, I don't know why you have to slap. Don't slap your neighbor. Not a good idea. But anyways, scolies definitely like moderate to, I would say more moderate than low, but definitely moderate. If I was going to put a number to it as far as par is concerned, I'm going to say 100 to 120. They really like that. The problem with your scolies is they also... I uh, definitely like the sand bed. Typically when you find scolies in the wild, they're in these really dirty little pockets of the reef where they're eating all the food. Uh, so they do definitely benefit from feeding. And they're also a great beginner coral. The only problem with them is they tend to be a little bit pricey because they're not actively aquacultured. Every person that handles a scoli all the way to the end hobbyist, uh, everybody's taking a cut 
And that's really what drives up the price with Scully's. And I don't know how many of you guys own stores or have wholesale accounts, but the price of Scully's has gone up substantially over the last month or so. So it might not be a bad time if you've been holding out to pick up a Scully to bite the bullet and get one for your reef tank because uh, prices have definitely gone up. Coming in at number six on our top 10 corals for those moderate low light reef tanks, you want to take a look at number six, which is the Favia brain coral. Some of my most favorite corals out there are Favias. This one in particular, which is the Dragon Soul, is one of my most favorite varieties. But I have found myself as of late collecting a Favia here and there, and uh, these are definitely one of my favorites. We also got some footage of my most favorite here coming up in a second. But as far as light requirements for these guys, they fall into that moderate to low area, which typically uh, 50 to 100 par is going to do them pretty well. So in a situation where you have a 100 par at the sand bed, it's definitely going to keep them pretty happy. And this is my most favorite as of right now uh, this is the yellow submarine and it is absolutely stunning when you get a whole colony of these going around uh going around i don't know if they're going around but growing if you get a whole colony of these growing they are absolutely stunning so definitely some interesting corals to check out uh absolutely love them coming in at number six we got the fabia coming in at number five in our top 10 corals for those low to moderate lighting situations in a reef tank. Another one of my personal favorites, we got the ACAN. Now, as far as the par requirement for these guys, I mean, obviously there's some varying degrees as far as levels, but 100 par is definitely the sweet spot for the ACAN. And this is also another LPS coral that is going to benefit from supplemental feeding. So the coloration that you can get with these guys is phenomenal. Uh, Feeding really isn't that hard as when it comes to corals. You can do broadcast feeding. That's my preferred method. I'm not really big on target feeding anymore. I uh, used to a long time ago, not so much anymore. And a lot of, depending on the situation with your reef tank, if you have a really dirty tank, I would probably not worry about feeding so much. But if you have a really clean tank, you know, using a food such as Reefroids or AB Plus is going to uh, push them a little bit further and you might even get some more colors out of them. Uh, so definitely a beautiful coral. Check them out. The ACAN coming in at number five. Coming in at number four, we have the Platy Gyra Blaine. Blaine? If I only had a brain. The corals I'd be talking about if I only had a brain. See what happens when you stick around? I sing to you. That's my promise. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, when you stick around, I'm going to sing to you. All right, let's pull it back together. So the platygyra, also known as the maze brain, can get super fluffy, as you see here, but it also can not be as fluffy as what you see here as well. Uh, things to note about the platygyra is they do have sweepers and other tentacles that can come out and slap their neighbors. So you want to make sure you give them plenty of room. And as far as a par number, they like that 100 to 80 par range. Uh, they're going to do pretty good with that. So definitely an awesome coral. Coming in at number three, we have the Pectinia. This one is a Space Invader Pectinia. Definitely an awesome LPS coral. Uh, not too demanding, but again, one of those ones that has the sweepers. So you want to make sure you give them plenty of room. Coloration is definitely unique and growth pattern as well. Uh, as far as par requirements on this guy, moderate lighting, 100 par is going to do this guy just well. I actually uh, got this guy from a breakdown, and I didn't even know what it was. It was completely browned out, and then slowly uh, brought it back to color. And as you can see now, we've got some pretty awesome colors going with the Space Invader Pictinia. Definitely an interesting coral and definitely worth checking out. It's coming in at number three. Coming in at number two, one of my most favorite corals, we got the Leptoceris. Uh, there's a lot of different variants of this guy. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, probably not as much as the Jack-O-Lantern that's out there, but definitely a close second. As far as lighting requirement on this guy, people tend to put this coral under too much light, and I would definitely go on the low end of the lighting spectrum. Uh, probably not much more than 70, 75 par. Uh, that's where you're going to see the best results with it. Definitely a great coral. Check it out, the Leptoceris. And coming in at the number one spot 
for those low to moderate situations in a reef tank, we have the good old fashioned zoanthid. Definitely one of the most beginner friendly corals on this list. Softy to boot. Uh, just anytime that you're talking about zoanthids, you always want to mention the threat of paletoxin. Not all zoanthids have paletoxin, but you should handle them as if they do. As far as lighting requirements go for these guys, they can withstand everything from 50 all the way up to 150, which makes them probably the best, most suited coral for those moderate to low lighting situations. And what I like most about zoanthids is they will give you visual cues on how they feel about their lighting situation. So if they tend to get a little leggy and stretched out and almost are reaching for the light, they're probably not getting enough light. And if they're really compact and pushed down, they're probably getting too much light. And eventually over time, if you had them in a certain situation, they could grow either towards the light or away from the light. Very interesting coral. Absolutely ton of colors, different variants. One of the best ones out there. Check them out. Coming in at number one, the zoanthids. If you want to learn more about other different types of corals that you can add to your reef tank, check this video out. I will see you over there.